The first time my brother listened to Currents by Tame Impala, he'd just been through a breakup. The album was so devastatingly on point for heartbreak that he couldn't listen to it again for another year. But Currents, released in July 2015, wasn't only disruptive to the lovesick. The album boasted this kind of legacy on all levels, challenging the authority of guitar rock, bringing Tame Impala to dance floors, and transposing psych pop into the mainstream. While they were already an Australian favourite, Currents was the album that introduced Tame Impala to the world stage, and this is why it mattered. It's something I gravitate towards as a listener and also as a musician is like music that is so heartbreaking, but like it's bittersweet. We saw Tame Impala play, you know, this festival on this island in Norway in about 2011. There are about 20 people watching. I think they're on at the same time as 30 Seconds to Mars or something. Yeah, there's pretty much no one there. Fast forward five, 10 years and I was, you know, watching them as the sun was going down on the pyramid stage at Glastonbury, surrounded by all my friends and what seemed like the entirety of England, singing back every word of Currents. That's an incredibly inspiring thing to see, I think. I think what Kevin did really well with this record was sort of take a risk in regards to moving away somewhat from, you know, the crunchier, more like offbeat sort of psych rock stuff that he was doing previously, which was also brilliant, mind you. Me as a producer and engineer too, and then finding out that he played all the instruments, produced it and mixed it was like... It was all from one man's weird and wonderful brain. Off the back of a relationship breakdown, Currents marked songwriter Kevin Parker's decision to dive into the glossy oasis of pop, wading through affirmations of hope into a resolution that feels clear but desolate. But it wasn't just a breakup album. It was an allegorical coming-of-age tale spun within the velvety walls of psychedelia. Parker confirmed as much to NME in 2020, sharing that people think that all of those songs are about breaking up, but I'm really singing about breaking up with myself. The eight-minute epic Let It Happen confronts self-destructive patterns with a linear beat. Gossip unleashes torrents of anxiety and hope. And Nangs is about, well, Nangs. We've all been there, Kev. Like, I think it has a great ability to sort of unite, I guess, electronic music fans, psych rock fans, and pop listeners without losing any of those listeners. That perfect enmeshment of genres and uh, how unique it is exudes authenticity, you know, everything about it is what, what makes it such like a strong standing iconic album. That's probably why everyone loves it. <laughs> but I think what it proves is uh, above and beyond anything else, you know, uh, record labels with loads of money or, 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 you know, big powerful managers or whatever it may be that actually like great music speaks to people and connects and can cross over and can sort of have this like ubiquity and this sort of like, you know, cultural moment. And there definitely, there was a moment. And in fact, in some ways it still feels like it's going on. You know, every time you'd go into a clothing shop or you'd go to a festival or you'd go into a coffee shop or you'd get in someone's car or whatever, you know, Currents was playing. And he did it at a time where I think a lot of people were appreciating like electronic music and like synthesizers coming more into play and like bigger bass lines and, and this kind of stuff. I think he took that risk at the right time and the, the su commercial success of it speaks for itself. Eventually, and the less I know the better, served to ground the record, bringing the audience and Parker back to the present. Bass-driven melodies bind you to the earth, while anecdotal lyricism unfurls Parker's story in addictive, bite-sized vignettes. New Person, Same Old Mistakes is Current's moody conclusion, which as Parker revealed to Pitchfork, contains some of his favorite drum sounds he's ever produced. Rihanna even included a cover of the track in her 2016 album, Anti. Uh, what did you make of the cover when you heard it? I thought it was cool. Like it was just, it was amazing to hear that song, which I always thought had a kind of an R&B edge to it. It got what it finally deserved by Rihanna, no less. It's no surprise that the record debuted at number one on the Australian and Dutch charts. Eventually, went platinum in Australia, debuted at numbers three and four on the UK and US charts, respectively, and moved 50,000 units in its first week alone. Five years later, Triple J listeners voted "The Less I Know, The Better." the best song of the entire 2010s. In the wake of Currents, Parker has produced, remixed, or written songs with Mark Ronson, Lady Gaga, The Streets, and many more of music's A-listers. Its influence on other artists is too profound to measure. And in Parker's home country of Australia, a Tame Impala ripoff band 
probably forms every weekend. Coming, I suppose, from a loosely speaking indie rock background, it's always incredibly inspiring when you see a band start off and come from, I suppose, like relatively humble beginnings or whatever, uh, and, and turn into these sort of like uh, deservedly so, like world beaters. The, the length of the record, um, the interludes, the lyrical content, the songwriting. The music, it's not even just the lyrics that speak to that, the whole music, the craft and the way it's built, it really feels like that release because there's so much tension and build and build and build and build and build and then it just like that stop, crap. Ah. In a sense, it was probably like a little brutal for like some of his OG fans at, at first, but what he did was like kind of admirable in a way because he just said, you know what, look, I appreciate like, what, like what's been done so far and the way the project's developed and the fan base we've garnered. He obviously was ready to take a bit more of a wider approach to the sound and a bit more of a risk. Really opened my mind up to to a lot of things and I think a lot of things I experiment with in terms of blending genres and going outside the bounds of your classic song structure. The album still stands as contemporary psychedelic music cinematic opus. It helped shape just about every Psycholine project that has come since, including Tame Impala's follow-up LP, The Slow Rush, throw a complete artistic dismemberment, a disruption of genre conventions and a creative vendetta into the mix and you have Tame Impala's conceptual renaissance. That's why Currents mattered and why it still matters today. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.